The latest updates when it comes to Gophers recruiting, who are they targeting in the transfer portal, and also who has already committed for the Gophers. Hey, you no are Locked happens, On Golden no Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get the podcast, uh, wherever you listen, Stitcher, Apple Pods, uh, Spotify, you name it. You can find us at Locked On Golden Gophers, and be sure to head on over to YouTube, where we're building this community up. It's fun to see all the comments and the generating conversation between all the Gophers fans out there. And I know it's just going to get bigger and better while we hit the actual regular season. And it's going to be here before you know it. So I, if you're excited, definitely let me know which game on the schedule is the one that you are looking forward to the most. Is it the first because it's the first game or because it's Nebraska with a new coach? Is it the rivalry games? What is the game that stands out to you on this year's Gophers football schedule? Now, we got some big things planned over the next few weeks, the next few days even. Uh, We're going to have some more Gopher football talk, of course. We're also going to cover the future of Minnesota hockey. Hopefully, we're going to have an update on Logan Cooley in the near future. And we'll also talk some Gophers hoops, both men's and women's, over the next two weeks. So you're definitely going to want to be sure to hit subscribe. And we're going to have friend of the show and other Gopher podcast host, Ryan Burns, on the show as well. Always love chopping it it up with him. So we're going to be doing that relatively quickly here in the next week or two. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of that. But let's jump in on what we're talking about today. And that is the latest Gopher commits. Who's still on the radar in this transfer portal for the Gophers? Are there positions they're looking for? And then finally, we're going to talk about if recruiting is on the upswing for the Golden Gophers. So sit back, relax, and let's do this thing. Now, talking about the latest commits, there are two of them for the Gophers since this spring transfer portal has officially opened. The first one is Trayvon Jones. He's a cornerback from Elan, which is an FCS school. Now, he is a graduate transfer. I believe he has... One year of eligibility left, but it could be two with that COVID year. You know, it always mixes me up, mixes us all up over there. So most, at most, he's got two years of eligibility, but I believe it's only one. He is a Phil, he was a Phil Steele FCS freshman All-American in 2019. Then he goes on to be all CAA in his conference for the next two seasons in 2021 and 2022, the next two full seasons, I should say. So he's got experience. He's got he's got some oomph to him. He's got some experience behind him that could be very valuable for the Gophers. 185 tackles, 15 passes defended, 11 and a half tackles for loss, five fumbles recovered, and three interceptions, plus two sacks and a forced fumble over the course of 2,000 snaps at Elon. So I think overall, you're getting a guy who's done a ton at that FCS level and will hope to get a bigger opportunity here in one of his final years of eligibility with the Golden Gophers in the Big Ten Conference. Now, according to his PFF grade, he's got a grade of 68.0 and a coverage grade of 69.9 or 67.9. But That doesn't mean he's bad, and that doesn't mean he's astounding. It means there's a room left for growth. There's some wiggle room in there for him to continue to step up. But looking at that production, it's definitely something that the Gophers need because this cornerback room is so young beyond Justin Wally. So it is a welcome addition. Now, over his four years, he has been targeted 147 times in coverage, and he's only given up a reception rate of 59.9%. And a lot of that was due to his freshman year where he gave up, a, I think it was in the 80s when it came to percentage. But outside of that, every single year beyond that has been about 50%. And that is not bad when you're co- talking to a reception rate versus a corner. Now, I think that he is going to be an interesting person to watch in this fall to see 
how much contributions they're looking to get from Trayvon Jones. Now, initially he committed to JMU, James Madison U, one of the latest teams to turn into a uh, FBS team from the FCS. But then he flipped to Minnesota. Now, he mentioned one of the major deciding factors was indeed the cornerback coach, uh, Nick Swag Daddy Monroe, and how they have had a genuine connection that had been building over their talks. And then he's going to play the field corner position for the Gophers, but there have been talks that he could play some nickel work as well, maybe on third down. So I think you're going to see him on the outsides a lot more than you will inside. Now, he's likely a veteran depth piece at that cornerback that this cornerback room absolutely needs and brings value experience. But I'm not sure he's anticipated to be a starter, but maybe some much, much more needed depth and somebody that can be a rotational player or in certain packages for the Golden Gophers. Now, the second commit that we have to talk about is Rowan Zolman. He is a safety, but he's going to likely play linebacker here for Minnesota. He comes from Miami, Ohio, and he has three years of eligibility left. So it's not just a one or two year deal. He was a freshman last year, and he is looking to make an impact here on the Gophers. Now, the long it's a more of a long-term outlook. I don't think it's going to be an immediate jump in, fill some immediate minutes, get a lot of reps. I don't think that's this type of transfer that we're looking at. It could be more like a Carter shot where he comes in and then he's a valuable rotational player for a year or two. And then he's really in the conversation to be a full-time starter by the time he hits his senior year. I think that's more of the route we'll probably see with this one, but overall it is a welcomed addition. He in, in high school and at Miami of Ohio, he played safety. But like I said, it sounds like he's going to be playing the linebacker position in, in Minnesota. So my guess is he would be that Sam linebacker position where we occasionally see the nickels and the nickel cornerbacks play depending on the packages and the looks that we're getting. So overall, he saw snaps in nine games last year as a true freshman. So he didn't have a red shirt year. Nine games, mainly on special teams, but he did have three games where he played on defensive snaps as well. Like I said, overall, I think this one is likely more of a long-term development as opposed to immediate contributor. But again, it's a depth position for the Gophers that had less depth at the Sam linebacker and at the cornerbacks for these two commitments. Now, the Gophers aren't done. They're still going heavily in the transfer portal, and we're going to talk about what could Minnesota still be looking for? What positions are still at the top of the list before May 15th when the spring transfer portal officially closes? That's what we're going to talk about coming up next. First, let's talk about our friends over at Built.com. That's right, we're talking about Built Bar, and if you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and the calories, then you need to try the best tasting protein bar ever, bar none. You gotta try it, and that is Built Bar. Now, if you're like me and you wanna make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on the taste, which is everything in my opinion, I've got just the thing for you, Built Bars and Built Puffs. The Bill Bars are healthy and they taste amazing and seriously, they're so good that you won't think they're good for you. They're wrapped in 100% real chocolate. They've got a variety of flavors, different strokes for different folks, and I am absolutely down to get a new box every single time I run out. And you can use promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off your order over at Built.com. And if you really don't want to wait on the mail, you don't want to order it online, then you can head over to a Sam's Club or a Walmart, head to the pharmacy section, and check out Built Bar there. Now, I might have said that, and that might have gave some warning flags for some, like, oh, every time I get protein bars from the pharmacy section, it's all chalky and it doesn't taste good. And Look, you got to believe me on this one. They taste much better. Actually, they taste genuinely good, and you're going to want to give it a try. Give Built a try today. 
All right, Gopher fans, thank you so much for listening to Locked On Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. And a shout out to the everydayers out there. If you're an everydayer, you already know one of the names that we're going to talk about today that the Gophers still have high priority on, and that is Avante Dickerson. We talked about him a little bit on yesterday's show, but we're hoping to go a bit deeper today. So definitely join us. Tune in each and every day. We've got new topics every single day. Day. And if you have a specific to- topic you want to hear about this offseason, look, I welcome the recommendations. Drop them in the comments below. We've got a long offseason and we're going to keep rolling out that content. So let me know what you want to hear about when it comes to Gophers, uh, whether that be top five lists all time, whether that be what we're looking at for recruiting, whether that be you name it. Let me know what you want to hear. Player interviews, we'll get them over here. But What could the Gophers still be looking for? That is what we're diving into next. Now, it seems pretty clear that Minnesota would like to bring in one more cornerback. Now, my guess is they would love it for for it to be somebody that is heavily experienced or or someone that is a major recruiting talent, maybe a high-star guy that just hasn't got the ability to shine quite yet. When I say that, I think of a guy like Benjamin St. Juice, who was with Michigan, didn't get a ton of opportunity or time, comes over to Minnesota, absolutely balls out, turns into a third-round draft pick, and then goes on to ball out in the NFL. That is what I'm talking about. That's the type of talent they're looking for, someone that has the capability, has shown it, was a high recruit, but just hasn't been able to get on the field in a major, major program. And we can offer them a very similar experience with more playing time. So I think that's kind of what you're going to see Minnesota target. Now, as I mentioned on yesterday's show, Avante Dickerson seems to be high priority, maybe priority numero uno when it comes to the Minnesota Gophers. Now, Avante Dickerson, what you need to know about him is he was the eighth cornerback in the entire nation when it came to his recruiting class of 2021. The eighth in the whole country, not just in his state, not just in the region, the whole country. So high upside talent guy you got right there. And he was the 122nd player in the entire class. So I think that's definitely something to look for. That's something to be excited about. And he's got high talent. Exactly what we were just saying you're looking for. And he's coming from Oregon, where he didn't get a lot of playing time. In fact, I believe he had 38 total snaps in his entire time there, according to PFF. So you're definitely interested by a guy like that that was a high star guy, hasn't had much opportunity at a Power 5 school, and the biggest turner, the biggest thumbs up for the Gophers when it comes to Avante Dickerson is that he has previous relationships with this staff. He was previously committed to Minnesota prior to Oregon entering the conversation and him flipping and ultimately going to the Oregon Ducks. Now, that relationship with the staff should help play into the Gophers' favor here. Now, he has been getting other offers from Wisconsin and Indiana and other schools as well, so there are definitely going to be some players in the conversation But if anything gives Minnesota a slight edge or advantage, it's absolutely the relationship built between him and the coaching staff prior to him going to Oregon. He knows the culture. He was excited by it and excited to be a part of it at one point. So that definitely plays in the Gophers' favor, but it's not a guarantee. So if they can't get in on Avante Dickerson, then I wouldn't be surprised if the Gophers entered the conversation for Markevious Brown as well. Uh, Markevious Brown comes from Ole Miss these past couple years, uh, currently in the portal. He has had contact with Nick Monroe at some point. Now, he only saw action in four games in 2021 as a freshman, so he was able to use that red shirt, keeping it within the four-game minimum, and then as a redshirt freshman last year, he had 146 snaps at the cornerback position. He also played on some special teams, so he played a lot more in that redshirt freshman year. Struggled in coverage a bit with a 51.9 grade, according to PFF. But, you know, it's playing in the SEC, which is, again, a top uh, conference. And the SEC likes to pass the ball way more than the Big Ten has. Now, that might change over this year, as we've been seeing with personnel changes, with coaching changes, and the different styles that people look to be building. So it could start to get more pass-heavy. But 
I think overall, Markevious Brown has a lot of potential to be a rock solid cornerback, even with the struggles in coverage in the SEC, even with some production given up as a cornerback. He has given up zero touchdowns in all of his snaps that he has played. So that's definitely a positive. And it shows that he can be, he can continue to grow. He can continue to be a valuable piece for a team as he gets better and better. So I think he's someone to keep an eye on. The Gophers have also already offered Antonio Carter, who is a cornerback from Rhode Island. Now, Antonio Carter has been getting an absolute ton of offers and opportunities since he's hit the transfer portal. He has been offered by Minnesota, by Wisconsin, by Cincinnati, by Ole Miss, and a ton of other schools. In fact, I believe he had offers from about 10 to 12 schools once he since he's been in the portal. Now, he's already taken visits to Ole Miss and Wisconsin, so I don't know if the Gophers are truly in that race right now. We'll keep an eye, our eyes peeled for that one, but I don't think that one is as prominent for the Gophers, is as likely for the Gophers. And all I really wanted to do by bringing it up is just to let you know they clearly are still looking at that cornerback position and continuing to look to bring in at least one more player from that room. Now, outside of cornerback, I think it's kind of hard to say. I think you're mainly looking for a high level or difference making talent. We saw the Gophers get interested in an offensive lineman from Wyoming. Now, they were not the only player interested in him. Uh, Pregnon is the offensive lineman I'm talking about. He ended up committing to USC. So you can see right there how heavily recruited, how heavily sought after he was as soon as he hit the transfer portal. But they were in on that one. And it doesn't seem like offensive line is really truly a need. And Pregnon would have been a guy who you try to get as a starter immediately. So like I said, I think if you're a high level difference making talent, that is something that the Gophers are looking for as well. Now, if we're looking position by position, I think Minnesota is pretty short up at the following positions. We're talking running backs. It seems like we've got a lot of depth in that room now with Sean Tuck or Sean Tyler. I almost said Sean Tucker. I've been watching the NFL too much with this draft this last week. But Sean Tyler, Bryce Williams, uh, Darius Taylor, Zach Evans, Jordan Newbin has been stepping up a ton. Max Grand has shown that he can be capable of running the ball efficiently and effectively as well. That's six running backs you're talking about that can get the job done for you in that running back room. So it's definitely not a need or a high priority for the Gophers. Now you move over to offensive line. And again, you're seeing a deep room. You're seeing a lot of talent in there and a lot of young talent over the last two to three classes in that offensive line room. So I think we've got a ton of depth. We've got a ton of youth in that room. And then the guys that are stepping into those starter roles right now are actually seeming to be more of the veterans, more of the experienced talent in the Nathan Bow, who has one year of eligibility left in the Carter Shaw, who could step as a starter. And again, has one year of eligibility left in Martez Lewis is heading into his third year now. So I think you're finding a lot of veteran talent at the top, and then you're still building with that the younger youth within the offensive line. So running back, offensive line, both feel locked up, both feel really strong and not too much of a need. And another one in that similar spot is wide receiver. And I think we all saw that at the spring game. You've got Elijah Spencer, you've got Daniel Jackson, you've got Corey Crooms all stepped up and looked like guys that can play right away and play huge impacts. Then you've got Chris Hyman Bell coming back. You've got Christian Hoskins stepping up. You've got true freshman Ken Kenrick Lanier, who was showing flashes all spring. And then you've got young guys that still haven't even got here yet. TJ McWilliams, Danielle Hayes. It's The wide receiver room is in a healthy spot. Those three positions have me extremely excited for the future and not too worried overall as long as you can retain the talent and keep them here in Minnesota and not hitting the transfer portal next season. The final one where I think we're really good is the tight end position. Brevin's going to play a ton of snaps. You've got Nick Kellerup who can play that more H-back or uh, inline blocking tight end position who has been very effective this past season. You've got Jameson Gears who can play that outside or the similar tight end position as Brevin as well. And then a bunch of young guys in the works coming up and then Sam Peters coming into this class. So again, it feels like this offense is really shaped up. and 
Then on the defensive side of ball, I think you can take any talent that comes through, but safety feels pretty locked for us. Uh, you're talking about Tyler Newblin, who's going to get a ton of snaps, if not all the snaps that he possibly can get. Then you've got Bry uh, Coleman Bryson. You've got Darius Green. You've got more talent in that safety room than maybe ever maybe than we've had. And that's all due respect to guys like Jordan Howden and Antoine Winfield Jr. Like at their time, eh, maybe not best ever. I'm going to walk it back a little bit because that Antoine Winfield year, I believe Tyler Newman was still on the roster. Jordan Howden was still on the roster. So that talent, that room was pretty, pretty wacko, pretty nuts. So I'm going to walk that one back, but the safety room feels like it's in a good position. Middle linebacker, you're all good there right now. It might have some wiggle room at the other linebacker spots to continue to build up some depth there. But overall, that leaves two positions that I think the Gophers might be still looking for, and that's quarterback and that's defensive line. Now, I'm not saying quarterback is a scramble and you have to go get a quarterback because we know Ethan Calic Manis is our future at the Gophers quarterback helm right now. But maybe if you can bring someone in with more veteran experience that could be a backup and is willing to be a backup at the Power 5 level, maybe is looking to get into more coaching beyond football, but he can be in there to teach the X's and O's, to be another set of eyes for Ethan, to break down film and things like that, I think you would welcome a player of that that ilk. And then finally, you've got defensive line. I think you're always looking to add a top tier, high talented defensive lineman, no matter what point of the year it is. So again, if the right talent and the right fit is there, I think the Gophers would welcome that opportunity. But overall, the portal window closes on 515. That's May 15th. That leaves us with 12 days remaining until we have a, we start to have a more clearer picture, a little bit more clarity on what this roster is going to look like. So that's what we kind of have our eyes on looking for the transfer portal and whatnot. But how has Minnesota been recruiting over these last few years? Is recruiting getting better? Is it on the upswing? Are we getting into that next tier of consistency when it comes to recruiting? That's how we're going to finish this show off coming up next. All right, Gophers fans, we're going to keep it quick. We're going to keep it smooth. But in Minnesota, the last few years, there's been some ups, there's been some downs when it comes to where the Gophers fit in recruiting for the entire conference. Now, sometimes they've been near the bottom, other times they're consistently in that 7, 8, 9 range when it comes to place within the conference for bringing in recruits. But is Minnesota on the upswing? Is it is it something to be excited about the trajectory that they're going on? I think there is still a higher ceiling they can continue to get to because of the success they've been putting on the field with nine and four, 11 and two, uh, COVID year, nine and four. So I think overall, I think you're going to see more players interested if that winning continues. That's going to be huge for this year with the harder schedule that we have, but I think it's going to be a good thing for the Gophers. If you can show up and get another uh, nine and four season, if you can show up and get to another 10 win season, that's going to be massive for people looking at you as, okay, look, the Gophers are getting it done consistently. We got to at least give them a little bit more respect, a little bit more credit when we're talking about them on these national media shows, when we're talking about early preseason rankings, when we're talking about rankings in general, look, the Gophers have been doing it. They've been finishing as a top 30 team. Uh, I believe three of the last full seasons, the Gophers have been in that top 33 even top 30 in a couple final polls. So they're getting there. They're getting better. And that draws more eyes of recruits. We haven't been a high passing team over the last few years, but then you see little glimpses of what happened with Ethan Kelly McManus in the moments. And all of a sudden we have three true freshman receivers coming in, two transfer portal receivers coming in and more, uh, more freshman 2024 class receivers committed and interested in being a part of this and that hasn't slowed down the running back room we also have highly talented running backs still coming in but the biggest thing that has been a massive upswing for the Gophers as of late I think one of the biggest points of emphasis and the biggest improvements we've seen in the past two seasons is their in-state recruiting you're talking about guys like Greg Johnson that stayed Martin Owusu that stayed Reese Tripp uh Garrison Monroe Jerome Williams 
uh, who else we got here? We've got uh, Carter Menz is almost from here. We'll cut, give in North Dakota, but still. Alex Elliott, Sam Peters. And then that's just from the 2023 class. You flip over to the 2024 class, and you're seeing more and more top-tier talent from the state of Minnesota staying home. Koi Parrish, who is going to be a dog and a baller. I'm telling you right now, get excited for him. Jide Abasiri from Prior Lake. Prior Lake has been a pipeline for Minnesota lately with Greg, with Martin, and with Jide. So I think that's going to be huge. Mo Sane from Eden Prairie. Uh, You've got Mason Carrier. You've got Simon Sedell or Seidel. I always say his name wrong, but that's what I'm talking about. We're continuing to build more and more home talent, it's keeping them home, keeping them interested, keeping them excited. And then that will help in future years as well with the younger guys seeing all these guys staying home, finding success, getting to bigger wins, getting to bowl games. And they're like, man, I want to play for the Gophers. That I've always liked the Gophers as a kid. That is what you love to build, the foundation, a pipeline, a desire to play for the home team. And it looks like it's starting to shape out that way. So I do think that is a positive for the Gophers moving forward, especially over these last two years. Now, I know we've lost out on guys like Jackson Howard. We lost out on Alenius Davis, who went to Washington. We lost out on a few guys here and there. It's true. But we're still in the running for Wyatt Gilmore. We have a bunch of guys currently committed that are from Minnesota. And I think it is shaping up in the right direction. So you talk about Minnesota's success lately in state. But then also looking at some of the talent. Darius Taylor, four-star guy, absolutely blew up in high school. Absolutely dominated in high school in the state of Michigan. Michigan offers, Michigan State offers, other Big Ten and other P5 programs offer, come in late, and all these things trying to get their their hand in the cookie jar at the last second. Darius Taylor stays, stands firm, stands packed, and commits to the Gophers, comes into the spring, looks like an absolute tank, and I think that that those type of moments are standing big. They're improvements from what we're used to as Gopher fans. So I think we're definitely in a healthy spot. It wasn't just Darius Taylor that fought off out outside sources. Greg uh, Johnson, Martin Owusu both heard from Wisconsin very late before the signing portal or signing window last year, and they stood pat. I think. Overall, you're you're getting more wide receiver interest, like I talked about. Over the last six to eight months, more are getting more and more intrigued by how the Gophers are going to play moving forward. Recruiting has been on the uptick. Now, we still haven't had a top 25 finish, but that doesn't mean it's not within likely outcomes in the next few seasons, and that predicates on how the Gophers finish this next season, how they compete in these next few seasons. Look, it's going to be an exciting time, especially if they can get some winning done in there. So I think overall, you should be excited by the uptick in recruiting, and it's not done yet. That's going to do it for us on today's episode of Locked on Golden Gophers. I appreciate you listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on the podcast over on YouTube, and I will see you tomorrow. Row the boat. Skyima. Go Gophers.